Hey, welcome to Living High Wild and Free. I really wanted to shoot this video out on the lake, but it won't stop raining and it is super windy. So just terrible filming environment. So welcome to my dungeon. Sorry for the not so nice ambiance, but what really matters in this film is the information that I'm gonna be uh, portraying, which is uh, how to charge lithium ion batteries off of your boat's alternator. And uh, there's a couple of different options um, out there, but I didn't really like them. And, and really the only other option was buying from some sort of uh, manufacturer, like a, a charging box, um, like from Minn Kota, uh, that allows different banks and stuff like that. But what I didn't like about those options was uh, the manufacturer was not detailed on like, what kind of voltage is it is it charging to like it will just continually as your engine's running will it just continuously charge those lithium-ion batteries which if you don't know anything about lithium-ion batteries uh, that is one of their biggest uh, weaknesses is that they're not like a lead acid battery like a starting battery where they can have a continuous charge being put into that battery once they reach uh, uh you know at a hundred percent they can't they well they can but it's not good for the battery to be continuously charged at a hundred percent the other thing about uh, one of those charge controlling boxes um, is that uh, if a component fails it, within that charging system you have to replace the entire system you have to re, you know go out and buy one of those expensive boxes and then rerun all the wires and all that stuff I didn't like that. Um, I didn't like that I couldn't have control over my system and also that if a component failed, I would have to then, um, you know, just replace the entire thing, run, go through the whole work again of running all the wires and stuff like that. I didn't like that at all. So what I have been scouring the internet trying to find another option and there's really sparse information out there and so that's why i'm creating this video um, to help you so that most of the work that i put in was actually researching this video um, so hopefully i save you a lot of time a lot of effort um, it is a fairly sy simple system uh, it'll seem complex right off the bat but don't worry i'll explain it i'll go through it and it's really simple and uh, it, it, it's effective. Like I like how much control that I have, but we'll get into later in the video about all the different ways that I control the system and I can uh, hopefully get the longest lifespan out of my lithium ion battery. So let's get into the nitty gritty of it. So my system has two different banks. I have one single battery for my starter, this is a lead acid starting battery. Um, and then I have three 100 amp hour uh, lithium phosphate batteries. Um, the, the manufacturer is called Elfast. Uh, I really like these batteries. I, I, you know, they're not a sponsor at all. Um, and uh, uh, they've already, proven themselves uh, through their protection uh, to be smart batteries, um, that they actually did protect the system um, from being overloaded because I made some mistakes. And <laughs> uh, if it wasn't for these batteries, I uh, might have burned my boat down. So I really like these batteries. They've, you know, they've, they've proven themselves to be good. And they also have uh, uh, Bluetooth so I can monitor what's going on um, in the battery through my phone. Um, and that's, I, yeah, I just really like them. So uh, I have one of these, the 100 amp hour batteries up front here. This is my house battery uh, that is running my um, graphs and uh, different electrical components within the boat. Um, and then uh, I have uh, two uh, charging uh, trolling motor batteries up front that uh, connects to a 12 volt or 24 volt system that feeds into my uh, trolling motor. So 300 amp hour batteries, one starter battery. Now um, I'm going to be going into remote areas. Uh, I'm going to be using my electronics extensively 
and I wanted to make sure that this battery, it's really only job is to start my engine. That's all I really wanted. Uh, that uh, That's all these uh, starter batteries are really good for. Um, they're really good for uh, putting out a lot of um, current at once to start the engine and also taking a lot of current um, as they're you know being charged from the alternator. They're not good at getting drawn down and uh, being depleted by your other electronics on board. Um, so that's why I have this house battery that can has plenty of juice. It has you know 20 hours at least of power to run my graphs and other electronics on uh, on board. So plenty of power. That's not with uh, being charged by the alternator at all. So um, what I did is uh, from the factory, all the electronic stuff like you know graphs, all everything that was on the boat was run off of your starter battery. I didn't like that at all. Like I said, um, so I installed a uh, charge controller um, from Victron. Uh, this is a 18 uh, amp, 12 volt system, and so my uh, starter battery feeds in to that charge controller and there's a positive and a negative that comes out of that charge controller and it goes to these bus bars and on the bus bar is my uh, lithium ion bank um, in parallel and so what this charge controller actually does is it monitors um, the amount of uh, volts and, <clears throat> and uh, determines uh, how to charge uh, lithium ion batteries. So, like I said, lithium ion batteries do not like to be uh, overcharged. Like, once they reach 100%, they like to go into a float charge or no charge at all. Um, and so, that's what this uh, charge controller is doing. So, it's doing that all. Um, by itself autonomously um, so I don't have to control any of that which is wonderful so as uh, the alternator is charging this battery it's feeding into the charge controller which then goes to um, this bus bar here and uh, and now that bus bar is feeding all of the other lithium ion batteries on board and so the next thing that I wanted to make sure that I didn't do was uh, draw down my uh, house battery from my trolling motor batteries. Now, right now, they're all connected, they're all in parallel, so I actually have uh, 100 amp hours, or sorry, 300 amp hours um, of power to, you know, power my graphs or, you know, charge things on board uh, through an uh, inverter, those sorts of things, like tons of juice, more than I actually need. But, um, now let's say uh, I've been using my trolling motor and uh, the bow batteries, the ones that are uh, powering the, the trolling motor, are depleted. Once I bring them back into parallel, I don't want them to draw too much from my house battery. Say my house battery is at 80%, they're at 30%, and they start drawing power from the house battery. Once my house battery gets to a certain voltage... This is a uh, voltage sensitive relay that I can control and determine. I can turn it on and off uh, through Bluetooth and I can also um, uh, set it so that once it reaches a certain voltage, so you know, roughly say 80% of my house battery gets depleted, it'll shut off, it'll close itself from the system and so the uh, uh, trolling motor batteries can't draw any more power from my house battery so that I have plenty of juice to run my graphs and all that stuff. So that is the uh, the system. Oh and I forgot to mention too that the, uh, the charge controllers, you can run it off of Bluetooth so you can turn it on and off, you can monitor it, you can see what's going on in the system which is really great. Um, so that in a uh, nutshell is kind of this this board that we have um, you know from the bus bar just uh, circuit breakers um, running uh, to different components like this is the starter, uh, here is the uh, port trolling motor battery and then this is the uh, house battery here just you know certain circuit breakers. I will mention that uh, 
I bought cheap circuit breakers because I was like, oh, they're just, you know, whatever. Like, uh, you know, this is kind of getting expensive. So I was like, oh, I'll just get the cheap ones because oh, I bet they're about the same. Nope. I mean, I know you guys are all shaking your head right now going like, that's just dumb. I know. Hindsight being 2020, uh, that was a very dumb decision. I almost burnt my boat down because of some cheap circuit breakers. Yeah, I went out, bought the expensive ones. Uh, not the most expensive, but, you know, run, you know, middle of the road, expensive uh, Minn Kota uh, circuit breakers. Definitely do not cheap out on these. Do not buy. I'll, I'm going to blast the company because they it was just junk. It was called Red Wolf uh, Circuit Breakers. Do not buy those. They suck. Get get some decent circuit breakers. So let's go into the front and I'll talk about how I am charging uh, my 24 volt system off of this uh, tw uh, 12 volt system. All right. So in the bow, I have those 200 amp hour uh, batteries, same make and model. I bought them at the same time as the house battery. And uh, uh, from the factory, uh, Lund wired up a uh, 24 volt system. So these two batteries are combined and they're uh, wired up to that outlet right there where my uh, trolling motor is, is uh, hooked up. Um, so my initial thought was, is, oh, I can just wire this all up and uh, just keep that unplugged that'll isolate and make it a 24 or a, sorry a 12 volt system that i then can charge not the case i know there's going to be a bunch of people in the comments going you're really dumb that was stupid i know it was i but i'm learning and i had to learn the hard way um luckily i didn't burn the boat down doing it the hard way so don't do it like i did and uh what i figured out through a little bit of trial and error is this is my the first battery. So the way that a 24 volt system is wired up, the first battery, the positive runs to the uh, negative of the second battery. The positive from the second battery runs to the load, this being the uh, trolling motor. And then from the load, uh, the negative runs to the negative of the first battery. And so in this uh, system, I have uh, two switches um, being circuit breakers, so they're kind of a safety switch just in case something terribly goes wrong or I uh, mess up and I do the wrong uh, switches. And one from the factory, that one's from the factory. Um, so uh, this, this positive goes to uh, the 12 volt system and then that positive goes to the 12, 24 volt system or the trolling motor. And then on the second battery, I re when I was shooting this video, I realized uh, that I did a mistake and I should put the uh, port um, fuse where I can reach it here um, because I'll need it. So right now it's on. So my so that's port uh, going to um, back to the 12 volt system. And, or, and then uh, this is um, the, uh, positive going to the, uh, 24 volt system, my trolling motor. And then this is the, uh, switch, the negative switch to my 12 volt system. This is the junk, uh, circuit breaker that I do not recommend, but it's just purely a switch on the negatives here. Um, so I'm not too worried about it for right now, just to get it all roughed in. I just wanted to make sure the system worked before I, I bought, you know, switches and all that stuff. So to isolate the 24 volt system, I have my negative and my positive, and then my positive on my first battery to the 12 volt system uh, off. So those switches are off. Now it's isolated from the 12 volt system. I can then uh, turn on my... 24 volt system and if I did everything right a green light should show up right here there we go the light's not okay yep yeah. so green there don't have any sparks <laughs> no uh, no smoke coming out turn my light back on and so I can turn that off. Now my uh, trolling motor, my 24 volt system is isolated. 
I can flip on these switches. Now it's now these batteries are plugged into my 12 volt system that can now be charged. Um, and what I also like about this system here is that I can uh, choose to charge these. So I can charge um, my trolling volt, uh, trolling motor batteries. Um, or say my house battery is getting drained. I can be like, you know what? I much rather have the graphs and all the other stuff. I need to have my house battery. So I'm going to not charge these. So I'm just gonna keep these off like that. Boom. These are not gonna get charged. Turn on my the motors running, uh, alternators going, and I can uh, charge my house battery or vice versa. My house battery is almost full. I don't need to put any more current into that so i can shut that off turn these on and then these are the only ones that are getting charged so it varies a lot and that's that's the one thing i really didn't like well not one of them but one of the things uh, that i didn't like about uh, getting um, just like a, a charging controller uh, from um, like Minkota or whatever, uh, just because you had no, it didn't seem like you had any control over that. Maybe in the future you will, but uh, the technology just wasn't there just yet. And that's my system that I created. Um, now, there is a lot of safety things to, to keep in mind here. Uh, these lithium batteries can put out a tremendous amount of power very quickly in a very short period of time, and they can become very dangerous very quickly. So if you don't feel comfortable with the knowledge that you have about electronics, then please seek a, a professional to help you out, to assist you. Um, and of course, do your own research. Each project has its own unique uh, desires and issues that you can come across. So uh, do your own research. Um, and uh, a suggestion from me is to check out uh, Clark and Emily Adventure. It's a YouTube channel. Uh, Clark is a fantastic resource for um, electrical needs, uh, boating, solar panels, charging off alternators, lithium batteries, lead batteries, um, just a fantastic resource of knowledge. Uh, he is an expert. I am not an expert. So please, if you have, you want more detailed information about uh, different electrical needs while you're boating or uh, camping, uh, please check out Clark's YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, thanks again for watching and as always, keep living high, wild and free.